Can a landlord enter a rental unit without giving written notice? One way to prevent your landlord from coming in is have a cat like this on Reddit with cat who yell, who was not letting this landlord come in. In this quick guide for renters and landlords, we are gonna run through California Civil Code 1954, and that's the law that dictates when landlords can enter and whether they need to give a written notice to enter. We're also gonna take a quick run through what a proper written notice would look like. Hey there. Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire Associates. We have been helping landlords and renters understand their rights before things go wrong. And remember, we can't give tax or legal advice, but for the most honest and up-to-date real estate advice, subscribe to this channel. And here it is, California Civil Code 1954 actually tells exactly when a landlord can enter and whether they can give oral notice or no notice at all. We'll take a quick run through this so you can take a look. So these are the only reasons a landlord can enter at all. So that in case of an emergency, make necessary agreed upon repairs to supply necessary or agreed services or to exhibit the dwelling to prospective or actual purchasers, mortgagees, tenants, workers, or contractors or make an inspection pursuant to this subdivision here. That doesn't mean a landlord can give a notice to do an inspection of the unit, just a plain old inspection. This specific inspection is related to the end of a tenancy when a tenant asks a landlord to do a walkthrough so they can fix any items before they move out. That's specifically the inspection that they're discussing here. Moving on, number three, when the tenant has abandoned or surrendered the premises. Four is if there's a court order. Of course, a landlord can go in then. Five is for the purposes set forth in chapter 2.5, well, that is related to uh, water conservation and the landlord working with the tenant or submetering the unit for water conservation. Exciting stuff. And then number six is to comply with provisions of Article 2.2, and that's relatively new, and that's related to inspections of balconies for buildings of a certain size or larger. That's it. These are the reasons a landlord can enter. Other than an emergency or if the tenant's abandoned, everything must happen during normal business hours, typically considered to be eight to five, and the landlord may not abuse the right of access or use it to harass a tenant. If a landlord is harassing a tenant through the use of the right of access, they can either call the police or reach out to an attorney to stop this from happening. Next section talks about the notice and making sure it's in writing for certain cases. We're going to run through a written notice and we'll explain further when it should be and how that's delivered. Two reasons a notice doesn't need to be in writing that falls in these categories. One is if the tenant and landlord agree to repairs, they can agree over the phone to when that's going to happen as long as it's within a week and then the landlord should leave written proof that they've been there and then two if the purpose of the entry is to show it to prospective or actual purchasers if the tenant has been given notice that the property is for sale within 120 days a landlord is able to do that again must leave written notice that they've been there and the important exclusions no notice of entry is required if it's to respond to an emergency of course if the tenant has abandoned or surrendered don't need to do it and another important one if the tenant consents at the time of entry. So a landlord could knock on your door and say, hey, can I come in? If you say yes, then the landlord's allowed to come in. Don't forget we're real estate agents based in Southern California. Landlords, if you're selling a tenant occupied property, make sure you hire a person who's gonna do it right. And what would a proper written notice look like and how should it be delivered? Take a look at this. And here's an example of a notice of entry. This is the most recent as a filming notice of entry from the California Association of Realtors. This includes everything that's important on the notice. It doesn't have to look exactly like this. Uh, you can get this from the realtor you're working with, or you can find one from an apartment association. You might be able to Google one up like my son says, but I do not recommend just using something you find online. So we'll give it a quick run. So obviously who this goes to, property address, then we get into the the date and time of entry and it says pursuant civil code 1954 which we just ran through we're going to give at least a 24-hour notice from personal delivery or posting it if it's mailed you need to allow an additional six days so that's covered here you're going to put in the date and the time that you're going to be there and again you're going to want to try to keep it to normal business hours eight to five a timeline would be best and then the purpose of entry you have to let the tenant know why you're going in landlords so it would be to make the following necessary or agreed repairs 
to supply the following necessary agreed services. Check as many boxes as you need. When I deliver these, I have multiple boxes checked. C, to show the premises to prospective or actual purchasers. We already saw that. So if a landlord's coming over to bring in a worker or contractor, for example, they could check A, to discuss the repairs, and then C, they're gonna show it to the contractor, so check that one too. And these other big ones are important because these are necessary for a landlord to do. The landlord has to test smoke detectors so they can come for that. Make sure the water heater is properly braced and then install or repair carbon monoxide detectors. Those are required as well in the state of California. So when I get a listing and it's tenant occupied and I'm going in for the first time, I'll have many of these boxes checked because that's part of what I'm gonna do too, is I wanna check the smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors, and also the water heater, make sure that's strapped. And then I'm looking for any leaks or things like that as well. That's what we do when we take a listing for a tenant occupied property. We give proper written notice and then we make sure it's delivered correctly. And we'll talk about that right here. So in order for this notice to be a valid notice of entry, you need to deliver it correctly and it runs through it down here. So personal service would be best if it's actually handed to the tenant. Next would be substituted service given to somebody who's at least 18 or over at the property. Three would be post Posting it to the door left at entry. I put it in an envelope and have a bag that I hang from the doorknob. That's how I post it to the door. You could tape it or staple it. Uh, just make sure it's in an obvious spot where they can find it, a usual door that they go in. And then last would be mail delivery, but again, that adds six days to the notice period. So if you're not gonna be there for a week or two, you could do just the mail delivery. Email is not valid by itself. You can do it as a courtesy, but email is not sufficient. Text is not sufficient. You need to actually drop this written notice off when you're coming in for certain reasons. And then keep a copy of it for your records. Oh, and what if a tenant decides not to let a landlord in after they're given proper written notice? Well, that renter is putting themselves at risk for an at-fault eviction, an at-fault termination of tenancy. This is one of the at-fault reasons to terminate a tenancy and a landlord could kick a renter out. Renters, let us know any crazy landlord entry stories that you have. And landlords, let us hear some of your interesting entry stories as well. Leave those in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to our free weekly email newsletter so you get updates like these gently delivered to your email inbox every Sunday. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire Associates, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, and we can't wait to hear from you.